Okay, so update. Um, I saw my new ENT today. That's a ear, nose, throat specialist. Um, he's really good. He like really good. Um, he's not just a doctor. He's also a professor. He's like one of the only three people in my hometown who can do the surgery that I need. So <clears throat> these sinuses, um, there's like a bone in between and there's like bones down through here um, and here that he's actually going to remove because my um, I have such a bad allergy to mould that if, if mould spores get up here, my sinuses swell the mold spores get stuck inside and because it's a moist environment, they proliferate and then I get a worse and worse reaction, which is why I'm so sick right now because I have mold spores in my sinuses, but because my sinuses are completely blocked, um, the mold's stuck in there. So I'm having a constant immune reaction to mold because it's stuck in my body. Um, so that's why I've been so sick. And it's probably been like this for years, honestly, because... But it, they've been bad for years. Um, and my last surgeon, um, in order to do these sinuses up here, they actually have to drill in to, like, flush them out. And he's going to have to remove bone, as I just said. Um, he said they're, like, completely blocked. I'm not getting any air through. So, which is probably why um, I have to... I do this, like, laboured breathing. It's, it's basically air hunger. Because um, I'm not getting any air in. So it's like... <sighs> But it's not enough. It's like, it's, it's like fuck all basically. Um, so I have to catch my breath. So I end I, I end up like breathing, like, <sighs> like to try and catch my breath, um, and reoxygenate my body. So, <clears throat> so yeah, um, that's why I'm so sick. I've got mold actually stuck in my sinuses because at some point I was exposed to mold. Mold spores went in. My body had such a bad reaction that my sinuses literally swelled over and, and closed, trapping the mold in there. So there's actually mold proliferating in my sinuses, um, probably up here as well. Um, and there's a whole lot of other stuff he's going to do. Like um, I've had two other sinus surgeries and um, he does this specific sinus surgery where he, um, there's like parts where the other surgeons didn't um, clean up. It's like he can get more out basically than even what other surgeons have got. And he's going to remove the bone here so that when I rinse my sinuses to make sure there's no mold in there um, so that my body doesn't do this again and, and try and kill me, um... I um I can flush out any mold spores and it's not going to get trapped up here. It's just it it'll flush a lot easier. So for me that's going to be a good option. And intuitively, as soon as he said it, I was like, yes, I need that. Um, <laughs> I get a lot of like pain here and like here, here, just like my face basically. Um, the other thing is, um, surgeries, last time I had sinus surgery was 2012. Before that, it was like 2003. And I said, I've always had like kind of stuffy, weird sinuses. So it, this isn't new for me, but hopefully this is going to be a solution that, um, is going to be more successful than other surgeries. And then managing it is going to be easier. And I can work out on the underlying energetic mental patterns that created this allergy and, Hopefully stop it from happening again. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I definitely need surgery. You know, I fully believe that we can heal ourselves and that there will come a time that that world is completely here. It is here for some people. And I think when your health isn't as severe, um, you probably can heal it before it gets more severe. But I think that Western medicine still has... Um, a place in intervening when it's severe and it's that physical that like I think that there's a limit to the healing that we can do right now I don't believe it's always going to be like that I think that at some point healing light 
um, healing herbs. I mean, marijuana, like seriously, that shit should be fucking legal already. And I'm someone who is exposed to people who reacted badly to marijuana. Like, yes, it does happen. It's rare, but it happens. Um, but I think everyone should have safe supply. I think if my brothers had have had safe supply when they were younger, they wouldn't have reacted so badly, you know, like in their teens and twenties, they would like my brother's first boss. We didn't know this until years after, but my brother's first boss was paying him in marijuana. So teenagers will find a way to get it. And there are shit people in this world who will just give it to them. So, (laughs) um, so yeah. And, but the thing is like safe supply, like, because then it's not going to be contaminated with disgusting, horrible pesticides that fuck with your brain. Um, and it's not going to be contaminated with other drugs so that you come back and keep buying weed. Um, so yeah, I think that fucking legalize it, tax it, make it safe, let people grow it if they want to like, just fucking legalize it. Seriously. It's not fucking heroin for Christ's sake or any other nasty drug. Um, But yeah, like there's going to come a time where we can fully heal completely naturally and get it under control before it gets this bad. And then um, Western medicine will just be emergency medicine, which is what its primary function is. It's what it's best at. No one can deny that. Um, But yeah, like we don't we don't live in that world yet. Like we're on the bridge. (laughs) We're on the bridge to that world. We don't live there yet. Um, I fully believe that sound can heal. I fully believe that light can heal. I fully believe that color can heal. You know, you look at UV treatments. Um, it kills like fucking every kind of bacteria you can imagine. They use it for IV. Um, there's like IV light, UV light therapy. They use IV light to, um, kill bacteria on buses and uh, uh, all sorts of things. Like even surgical equipment and I don't know, lots, lots of things. So they already know that that's a thing. So I believe that light therapy is going to have more of a, wherever it's, whether it's um, infrared light or UV light. I mean, the, the spectrum of light that humans can see is so tiny compared to what exists. There's got to be so much more out there. So um, light, color, sound, herbs, um, all of these things will be effective um preventative measures that it's very unlikely that most people will need surgery um but yeah like as I said we're not there yet and I'm not going to beat myself up because I'm not this um I don't know like master healer I'm pretty decent like I've kept myself alive (laughs) I probably should be dead um but I'm not so bring it, (laughs) bring it life. I'm ready. (laughs) I've survived like more than most people would have in my condition. Um, but yeah. And so the other thing, uh, that he's going to do that I, that I've never had with the other two previous sinus surgeries is, um, post surgery every two weeks. Um, and he might even bump that up if he feels that I need it more regularly than that. Um, he's going to like rinse it out and clean it all out um, so that during the healing process as I, um, you know, as it crusts over and there's blood or whatever, like, you know, just like healing, um, he's going to clear it all out to make sure that no bugs can proliferate, not going to get an infection to check that I'm healing properly, to make sure he doesn't need to go back in and, and clean something else up and yeah, just like, and he said that in the past they didn't realize how important that kind of um, post surgery care was. Like, I've never had that before. Um, I've gone back, you know, um, and they just check on you and they take out like the um, gauze. And it sounds like he does actually use gauze, whereas the last time I had it done, they used dissolvable gauze. And, like, my sinuses just felt – they felt swampy and weird and they never felt normal again after that. So it sounds like he uses, like, proper gauze, which I fucking love the sound of that. So just basically it went really well. I really like the surgeon. Um, he's a younger guy. Like, he's a professor. He said, he said oh, I'm, I'm older than I look. Um, so – but he's young enough that – 
he, he'll probably be a surgeon and be around for most of my life. And so he'll be something that I can fall back on and rely on. So, um, so that's really nice. And yeah, I'm just like, okay, I'm not crazy. I'm allergic to mold and it's literally trapped in my fucking sinuses. So it's no wonder I'm so fucking ill. Like my immune system is just like constantly go, go, go because it's, I've got mold trapped in my body and I'm allergic to it. Like I can't stress this enough. I have something that I'm allergic to in my body that he could see on the scan. And he's like, Oh, you've got, see that there, that it's mold. You've got mold in your sinuses. And I was like, well, I'm not mad. I'm not making this up. I didn't do this to myself. It's just a fucking allergy. Um, and I can fix the allergy, but it's going to be pretty hard to fix something that is constantly triggering you. Like, th- it, this is traumatizing me every day. In order to heal the trauma of whatever created this allergy to mold, um, I mean, the fact that there's mold in there is just not good for you anyway. So <laughs> it's like. It's like 3D, 4D, 5D. Like it's it's a multi spectrum, but um, I've got a great doctor, and I'm going to be able to heal. So uh, it's going to be like six weeks though. So I'm just gonna I'm like oh whatever. I'm in survival mode until I get my surgery. I'm probably going to have lung surgery again because this is making my lungs worse. I mean, it's your whole respiratory system is connected, isn't it? So. Um, so I'm probably going to have lung surgery soon, hopefully. And then another one, he wants me to have one like probably like a week before I go in for my sinuses because it's going to be like a four hour surgery. So, um, so yeah, I'll have my lungs done probably twice in like the next six weeks. He reckons it's going to take him about six weeks to catch up on the surgeries that he was supposed to do these past six weeks when we've been on quarantine and doctors were forced to stop doing elective surgery. How many people fucking died because of elective surgeries being cancelled? It's it, it, like, seriously. And it, they might not die like tomorrow or in the last six weeks, but they might die in the next six months to a year because they didn't get surgery on time. You know, maybe they couldn't have a fucking um, cancer taken out or... I, I don't know, but seriously, like, oh, fuck, this fucking plague, seriously, oh my fucking God, if young, healthy people were dying in droves, yeah, I'd be worried. Um, Young people who do die, I would go, mm, what undiagnosed issue did they have? Because don't fucking tell me that this COVID killed them. I don't fucking believe you, because why aren't tons of young people dropping dead? I don't buy it. I don't buy it for a fucking second and neither should you. Um, the people who die from suicide because they've lost their jobs and their livelihoods and their homes and like everything, that's going to out eclipse it easily. Um, the lives lost because they couldn't have chemo treatments because they couldn't be in hospitals and be immunocompromised at the same time. Like, like <laughs> that's going to be a lot of people. Seriously, like the fallout from this, we haven't even begun to see yet. The numbers of people dying because of the measures taken is not even going to, we're not going to see that for a while. And how many factories have shut down? How many people are going to go hungry because of this? Like our factory shut down? What, what else shut down? What was not considered a necessary um, service? What shut down that is going to affect us because we, we've missed out on six weeks of supply, of manufacture? Like, what is going to happen? We don't know. Um, and the longer this goes on, the worse it's going to be. So just, like, start asking questions. Don't just buy the media narrative, seriously. <sighs> It just doesn't, it's just not justified. Less people die of the flu every year. I mean, more people. More people die of the flu every year than the beer virus. <sighs> anyway, that's my rant for the day and my good news. Um, but yeah, question everything. Do your own research. Make up your own mind. And hopefully you'll have some good news soon too. Bye.